Hey guys, welcome to another video. This video is two things. One is the case to buy a downwind board, and one is just a review of the Amos Sultan. Not, or maybe not a review, more of a, just an experience because I'm not reviewing stuff per se anymore. I'm just telling you what happened with it. Well, maybe that's a review, I don't know. So let me first start with making the case that everybody should have a downwind board in their quiver. I really do believe this. Um, a friend of mine, Kieran, I literally talked to him today and he totally disagreed with me. So everybody's entitled to their opinion and uh, everybody's also entitled to defend their opinion. That's the caveat. And uh, he couldn't defend his, so I win. These boards have been on the market for a while, but they're getting better and better very quickly. Uh, I'm obviously riding the Amos Sultan, but they've also got the Phantom, I believe. And then you've got uh, Sonova doing boards, Axis are doing boards. There's heaps of different boards out there. And um, getting your hands on one is a pretty good idea. Here's the thing. I'm not going to make this like a super fancy video. I'm just going to overlay it with some footage and get stuck into my argument. So, so the first reason is obviously learning to downwind. Downwind to me is the backcountry snowboarding of the ocean. It is amazing. It's fucking hard but having a good downwind board is a is a good step in order to accelerate your learning curve the boards these days if you can learn to stand on them the narrow, narrower boards they totally help with speed and glide and acceleration and so match that with one of the newer foils getting newer gear that's more not advanced but um newer to market does make a big difference in learning to downwind because things are only getting better and better very quickly and uh, I went from a 26 inch wide board, a Sonova, which felt like a tank, to a 21 Carbon Co board. And I did got a lot of progress on that board. And then I've moved down to a 19 wide board. The narrowness of the board, one of the things that's really overlooked is how much it benefits you just paddling out into the bumps because if they're so fast, just a prone paddle. And so that leads into my next point. These narrower boards, you can learn to prone or hand paddle them. Now, I don't I don't think I'll ever do the hand paddle thing personally. Um, I will try the prone paddle thing probably at some point, but I'm in no rush because I still suck at the normal paddle, so. But these newer boards, longer boards, definitely seem to um, help with that. The third reason is more time to be able to surf. So yes, you could do this on a, uh, a surf specific sup foil with a lot of leaderage, uh, but they don't have the same, obviously the dimensions are totally different. So you don't get as much glide and you don't get as much speed. They probably feel a bit better once they're up on foil, but then there are days where it's not breaking that you might not be able to even get on foil. Whereas if you have a downwind board, as you'll see in these clips, you can get on foil when there's next to no wave and it's not breaking. You can be up and riding and I've already done multiple turns by the time the wave breaks, much to the detriment of the longboarders. It feels like payback is finally here. So that so the third one is actually my main point is that these boards are so great to surf with. I think they're a lot of fun. It teaches you a lot of skills. It improves your pump fitness because 
you're having to pump around a larger board. So then when you go back to your prone board, you've sort of, you've trained with resistance in a sense. And so that actually feels easier. And I definitely noticed that with downwinding, um, then coming back across to my prone board, my pumping range has just increased dramatically oh, on and on and on. And my fourth reason to get a downwind specific board is because they're absolutely amazing in light wind. Whether that's offshore winds where, you know, it might be 12 knot offshore and you're worried that you might get stuck a fair way out if, you know, the wind drops or something. Well, paddling back's not a big issue on a, on a downwind board. It's so fast. Um, but also getting up in really subpar conditions. I put up a video recently of me falling in 8 to 10 knots and it was genuinely 8 to 10 knots. I'm not, there's no bullshit about that. I, I've been kiting for a long time previously and so I have a very good sense of what the wind is doing and no way I would have gone out under without that gear that specific gear so so they're my four reasons for uh, adding a downwind specific board and by that I mean longer narrower and about your own weight uh, minimum volume but I would recommend and this is because this is what people told me and it's worked for me. So it's not like I've discovered this. Um, I would recommend going about 20 liters or so uh, more than your weight. So I'm riding a 120 liter board and I'm 95 kilos. So 25 liters. Um, something to consider is the foil that you would like to use. So if you go 19 wide, but then you use a narrower, uh, say a 900 wide foil, you need to consider that because that board will be considerably less stable than if you use, say, a 1300 wide wing on a 19 inch wide board. Oscar, in his video about mast length, also mentioned that on top of that, you've got the mast length. So if you use a 75 versus, say, an 82 or a 75, that will change the stability profile. Like I said, this isn't a review of the board. I think it's great. That's my review. I don't know enough about board design to provide any insights. All I can tell you is it's fast, it glides amazingly well, it's surprisingly stable, and it feels great when it's up on foil. They're sort of my reasons. And, and lastly, the bonus reason is my colors look amazing. So thank you, Amos. The, the Sultan tracks really straight. Uh, it was a big difference I noticed between a previous board that I was on. For when you're winging, that can be kind of annoying because you might need to adjust. Um, but it's light wind winging, everything sucks. All you need to do is get enough speed, which it does that. It gets speed, it gets up, and then it's not a problem. But when you're in the bumps, it's great because it wants to go straight. So even if your paddle technique sucks a bit, it allows you to um, suck a bit, pretty much, uh, as long as you can balance on it. It's got, I don't know if you call it a double concave or you call it, um, I don't know what you call it, but it's, it's got, you know, like a bow belly in it. So it, and one of the, the key differences that I've experienced with this, this board is how well it bounces. And that's a part of creating speed is as you're paddling up, you're using the board to bounce the foil back up as well at the same time as creating lift with your paddle. And this board I have found to be very good at it, which is why you can have these thick boards that are narrow because they like to bounce down and up. Whereas a fat board seems to slap and lose a lot of its energy. And so one of the reasons I think downward boardings are heading this way to being narrower and narrower is because of that. They seem to jump down into the water, but then they want to bounce back up, which really helps in flat water, obviously. Um, but in the bumps, it helps a lot as well. So other than that i'm i really love this board i've had so many fun sessions i haven't done as much downwinding on, on it as i would have liked so my experiences are limited and the downwind run i did do uh in good conditions i had one good one and one bad one and i had the foil too far back and you can see that in the video if you look at my back quad it is like fully tensed and it ended up cramping because i didn't adjust my feet um, to compensate for some strange reason, new board, trying to feel it out. And so, um, yeah, I've fixed that now. And anyone who's curious, I opted not to have a handle and I've not missed it. I've never used the handle on the one I had. So I personally would just, if you're going to 
you can save some weight and why not? You don't need a handle. Um, you carry it by the foil uh, anyway. So, or over your shoulder. And that's my only other tip is to make sure you use rail guard tape. I haven't, and now I've scratched the shit out of the side of my board because I use such a wide paddle, I've banged it many times. But anyway. So one of the key things that people whinge about is uh, their ability to pump, and I just think it's nonsense. People, you, you know, I can happily pump around a 7-8 board uh, in the surf, and I can. it's even easier in a downwind scenario and so anybody saying that is living in their past and these boards are very versatile. They're very maneuverable. They're surprisingly maneuverable is probably the point I'm trying to make. And um, as I said previously, they actually make you a better pumper um, in prone and, and well, you know, in any scenario because you have to work a little bit harder because you've got more board and more weight to pump around. But for the most part, um, you should have no problems pumping around these boards obviously on the appropriate size foil and whatever foil that is for you guys uh yeah so so that's it that's a long explanation about two things in one video who'd have thought who'd have thunk it um hey if you have any questions i'll do my best to answer them like i say i'm just a dude trying to figure this all out i'm no authority i just like to make entertaining videos and reviews and I happen to be getting you know, access to a lot of newer gear, which is really exciting. And I get to share some of those experiences. And other than that, have fun falling. Peace. Thanks for watching this video. I did want to add some extra points that I didn't actually say on camera that were really, really important. So don't miss these. The Amos Sultan has 16 inch tracks, same as the Phantom does. It means that any any foil brand will work with this board. There are, there is a very big name brand that has brought out a production model recently with very short tracks and the tracks are really far back. It's a problem. It's something you need to consider when you look at what board you buy is what foils do you want to be able to use? How much freedom do you want you to be able to use in different foils? So something to think about. 16 inch tracks on the Sultan and the Phantom means that whatever brand you're on, you will be able to use that for it. The other thing I wanted to mention was it's a good idea to get custom dimensions. Everybody's different, everybody wants different things, everybody's at a different point in their journey. And so if you want a seven foot by 19 board because you like the idea of something shorter, then you can order that. There's lots of different options available and getting a custom board is a great thing. Have a chat to Amos and the team. They can give you some advice on what you should get. So thanks for watching this video. There's gonna be a lot of this board being featured on my channel and my Instagram. So if you don't follow me on Instagram, head across and have a look. This is my go-to downwind board now and um, I'm gonna use it for prone surfing and light wind wing a lot. I'm really loving it. So thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great day.